Friends, I am absolutely delighted to be with you. And I want to begin with a very short, simple statement. In my view, Nakba denial, the denial by supporters of Israel, right or wrong, of Zionist ethnic cleansing, is as obscene and as evil, repeat, evil, as denial of the Nazi Holocaust. But today is not just about remembering what started to happen in Palestine that became Israel 62 years ago. It's about saluting the incredible, almost superhuman steadfastness of the occupied and oppressed Palestinians. Now, the victory sign is only a gesture, but I ask you now to join me in making this gesture and say after me, Palestinians of the occupied West Bank and the beleaguered Gaza Strip, we are with you. Say it! We are with you. But you know, if one reversed the B sign, as Churchill often did, you get that. And you could say that was an appropriate gesture to Prime Minister Netanyahu. <laughs> now, he would have no cause to be offended because it's a gesture that he frequently makes to President Obama. I also want you to know why the Palestinians have a special place in my heart as well as my mind. If there is one people on earth who ought to have been dehumanized by what has happened to them, it is the Palestinians. They have not been dehumanized, but their Zionist oppressors have been. Dehumanized by their racist thinking, their insufferable self-righteousness, their contempt for Judaism's moral values and ethical principles, as well as international law and their criminal actions. Today, I go as far as describing Israel's right-wingers as Nazi-like. <laughs> For some light relief, and also some rare insight, I'm now going to tell you my two favorite stories about the two greatest opposites in all of human history, Yasser Arafat, Father Palestine, and Golda Meir, Mother Israel. She was incidentally called Mother Israel because without the $50 million she raised in America, Ben-Gurion would not have had the money to buy the weapons that allowed Israel to dominate the Arabs. One of my most treasured souvenirs from my television reporting days is a signed picture of Golda Meir when she was Prime Minister. The inscription in her, her own hand is to a good friend, Alan Hart. Now, because I'm a goy, that meant quite a lot to me. The picture is on my website. It's in the first edition of my book over there. But I'll tell you how I use it as a protective shield. I've lectured and debated coast to coast across America a lot. So I've been accused of anti-Semitism quite a lot. When that charge is made, I hold up this picture of Golda Meir, I read out her inscription in her own hand, and I say to my accuser, do you think that old lady was so stupid that she couldn't have seen through me if I was anti-Jew? And that normally brings down the house. <laughs> now, when Golda died, I went to Israel as a private citizen to say a last goodbye to her. And at the burial ceremony on Mount Herzl, I was watching Prime Minister Begin and the cabinet leave, and there was a tap on my shoulder, and it was Lou Goddard. She was a 
very warm, witty uh, Jew of French origin, and she was Golda's confidant and best friend all her life. And she said to me, Alan, please come back to the apartment for a drink. There's something I must tell you. Over a glass of wine, you said to me, do you remember that Panorama interview you did for the BBC with Golda, in which she said the Palestinians did not exist? And I said to Lou, not only do I remember, the whole bloody world remembers, because it was said by Golda herself on film. Actually, the full quote was, there is no such thing as a Palestinian. It's not as though we came and took their land from them. They did not exist. Lou then said to me, quote, Golda made me promise to tell you, but not until she was dead, that as soon as those words left her lips, she knew they were the silliest damn thing she ever said. Unquote. Now, when I started to write Zionism, the real enemy of the Jews, I thought the significance of Golda's message to me from the grave was almost impossible to exaggerate. On the personal level, I took it to mean that she wanted me to know that she was not actually as deluded as I might have imagined her to be on account of her denial while she lived of the existence of the Palestinians as a people with rights. Put another way, she was acknowledging the difference between, on the one hand, Israel's propaganda, the myth Zionism created to fool the world and comfort itself, and on the other hand, what she knew to be true. In effect and posthumously, Mother Israel was admitting that the creation of the Zionist state required the doing of an injustice to the Palestinians, and that Israel was living a lie. But of course the problem for Golda's generation with the truth, the actual existence of the Palestinians, was that it raised fundamental questions about the legality and the morality of the Zionist enterprise, which was of course her life's work. On reflection, and because of her last message to me, I'm inclined to the view that Mother Israel went to her grave, troubled by the injustice done to the Palestinians. She would not have been able to escape the logic of reality and the question it begged. If the Palestinians did not exist, no problem. But if really they did exist, what have we done. Now the Golda that I knew would have asked herself that question because it was obvious as it was before, before her death that the regeneration of Palestinian nationalism was as much a pay accompli as the existence of her state. But of course the truth was too uncomfortable for Mother Israel to live to confront while she lived. And I think she gave me this message from the grave to perhaps signal that she wanted those who came after her to think seriously about it and right the wrong, in which case, when as the day, say today, she'd be bloody disappointed, wouldn't she?